In this video, we will discuss the invasive or infiltrating carcinomas of the breast. We will discuss what they are, their molecular subtypes, morphology and histological subtypes. And in the next video, we will discuss staging and grading, prognostic and predictive factors and the treatment options. So let's start. What is an invasive or infiltrating carcinoma of breast? It is a condition in which the tumor cells invade the basement membrane. You can see that the tumor cells are invading the basement membrane and trying to form a separate mass or separate group. This is in contrast to ductal carcinoma or lobular carcinoma in C2s. Now, what are the molecular subtypes? They are divided into three categories. ER positive, which is the most common one, HER2 positive and triple negative. We have discussed this in details in our first video. So let's proceed. So this is the most important topic of our concern that is morphology and histological subtypes. So according to this, the breast carcinomas, invasive breast carcinomas are divided into two categories, invasive ductal carcinoma and special subtypes. These special subtypes are special in their morphological architecture. These include invasive lobular carcinoma, tubular carcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, carcinoma with medullary features, papillary, micropapillary and apocrine carcinomas. Now invasive ductal carcinomas are also called NOS, not otherwise specified. Not otherwise specified means that these invasive ductal carcinomas lack the special features that are present in these special subtypes. So basically invasive ductal carcinomas are defined by their definition of exclusion in a way that they lack these special features. And invasive ductal carcinomas are the most common type of invasive breast cancers. We will discuss each of these in detail. So let's start with invasive ductal carcinoma, which is the most common one. So grossly, the invasive ductal carcinoma presents as a palpable, hard, irregular mass. And for the microscopic features, the keywords to remember are not otherwise specified tubules and sheets invading the stroma. Not otherwise specified again means a very important point about invasive ductal carcinoma that they lack features of other subtypes. So they lack special features of these subtypes which we will discuss. Secondly, there will be tubules and sheets. So tumor will be composed of tubules with low grade nuclei or sheets of anaplastic cells. So the point is that in invasive ductal carcinoma, the tumor arises from the terminal ducts and its morphology is initially like ducts. So if the tumor is well differentiated, which means a tumor with good prognosis, then it will be in the form of tubules and they will be low grade nuclei. Low grade nuclei means that are good in their differentiation. But if the tumor is very undifferentiated, then it will not be arranged in the form of tubules. Rather, it will be present in the form of cells, in the form of sheets of cells and this sheet of cells will be anaplastic. So you will see sheets of anaplastic cells or you will see well differentiated tumor in the form of tubules with low grade nuclei and invading the stroma here it demonstrates that in invasive ductal carcinoma you will be able to see desmoplastic response what is desmoplastic response so the thing is that in invasive ductal carcinoma the tumor cells that invade the basement membrane are close to one another like in the form of tubules or in the form of sheets so when they invade the basement membrane they induce the surrounding stromal tissue to develop a lot of collagen, a lot of fibrous tissue. This thickening of fibrous or collagenous tissue in the network surrounding these tumor cells is called desmoplasia. So you will see desmoplastic response when these clustered cells invade the stroma. So these are the morphological features of invasive ductal carcinoma. And remember that most of the invasive ductal carcinomas are ER positive. Now the second category is invasive lobular carcinoma. Invasive lobular carcinoma is mostly associated with lobular carcinoma in C2 as the name implies and for its microscopic features you will see loose discohesive cells just like we studied in lobular carcinoma in C2 that in lobular carcinoma in C2 the cells were present far from one another. Why they were far from one another? Because there was a mutation in a protein ECAD herin whose responsibility is to adhere the cells. So in lobular carcinoma in C2, the cells were discohesive and even in the invasive lobular carcinoma, the cells will be discohesive and there will be single file infiltration of cells. This means that cells will not be clustered together, rather they will be present as a single file pattern. And often the cells are pleomorphic. Pleomorphic cells mean that vary greatly in their shape. 
and the lag desmoplastic response. Why the lag desmoplastic response? We saw desmoplastic response in invasive ductal carcinoma in which the tumor cells were clustered in the form of tubules and sheets. But as in lobular carcinoma, the cells are far from one another, so these individual cells alone cannot induce enough proliferation of fibrous tissue, so they lack desmoplastic response. And often at times, the morphological picture of invasive lobular carcinoma contains signet cells. But signet cell is a cell in which the nucleus is pushed to site and there is a large empty vacuole present in the cytoplasm. So you will see signet cells. Now there is a specific point about the pattern of metastasis in invasive lobular carcinoma. It usually metastasizes through CSF, cerebrospinal fluid of nervous system, serosal services of GIT and of lungs or of heart and it metastasizes to GIT, ovary, uterus and bone marrow. So this is the pattern of metastasis and as far as the molecular features of invasive lobular carcinomas are concerned, they almost every time express hormone receptors that are estrogen receptors and HER2 cancers are rare in this morphological subtype. Now let's discuss special subtypes which is carcinoma with medullary features we will discuss each one of these so in carcinoma with medullary features grossly the tumor will appear as a round mass that appears benign so the word medulla actually means soft so you will see a round soft mass that will be benign that will appear benign actually it is a cancer and on microscope you will see large anaplastic cells with lymphocytic infiltrates the presence of lymphocytic infiltrates is representative of carcinoma with medullary features so you can remember that these double l in medullary stands for large anaplastic cells and lymphocytic infiltrates and the presence of lymphocytic infiltrates indicate good prognosis because it will be relatively easier to treat this so remember that in medullary features you will see large anaplastic cells and more importantly presence of lymphocytic infiltrates now according to molecular characterization they are triple negative and there is a small note that says secretory carcinoma is another example of triple negative tumor. So remember this from MCQ's point of view that these carcinoma with medullary features and secretory carcinoma are examples of triple negative tumor most often. The next tumor in the line is mucinous or colloid carcinoma which is another special type of invasive carcinomas. Grossly they appear as soft and gelatinous mass as implied by the word mucinous. On microscopic picture, you will see abundant amount of extracellular mucin. As the name implies mucinous, you will see abundant amount of extracellular mucin. And on molecular characterization, these tumors are ER positive and HER2 negative. Next category is tubular carcinoma. In tubular carcinoma, there are well-formed tubules and low-grade nuclei. Well-formed tubule means that the tumor will not be very undifferentiated, rather it will be highly differentiated in the form of tubules. So as well-formed tubules indicate good differentiation, so these tumors have a good prognosis and it can be simply remembered by the name tubular well-formed tubules. And these tumors are usually ER positive and HER2 negative. And next in line is papillary carcinoma. Papilla means finger. So you will see fibrovascular tissue lined by tumor cells. There will be fibrous vascular tissue. It will contain fibrous tissue and vessels and it will be lined by tumor cells. Now there are two important types of HER2 positive tumors, apocrine and micropapillary. Remember this from MCQ point of view that HER2 positive tumors have the example of apocrine carcinoma and micropapillary carcinoma. Apocrine carcinomas have eosinophilic granular cytoplasm and large round nuclei with prominent nucleolus. So as the word apocrine implies, the cells resemble the apocrine cells of sweat glands. So in the cells, there will be abundant eosinophilic granules. These represent that these cells are really specialized in secretions. And they have large round nucleus with a prominent nucleolus. So remember, these resemble apocrine glands. So in apocrine carcinoma, you see eosinophilic granular cytoplasm, large round nuclei with prominent nucleolus. Another type of HER2 positive tumor is micropapillary carcinoma. In micropapillary carcinoma, cells arrange to look like 
स्ट्रक्चर्स रिजेंबलिंग पेपिला सो वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड पेपिलरी कार्सिनोमा इन पेपिलरी कार्सिनोमा यू सी फाइब्रो वेस्कुलर कोर्स डेट इज लाइन बे ट्यूमर सेल्स बट इन माइक्रो पेपिलरी कार्सिनोमा यू डोंट सी फाइब्रो वेस्कुलर कोर्स लाइन बे ट्यूमर सेल्स रेदर द ट्यूमर सेल्स दीज ट्यूमर सेल्स ट्राई टू फॉर्म ट्राई टू अरेंज इन अ ओरिएंटेशन डेट अपियर्स लाइक अ फिंगर सो दिस इज माइक्रो पेपिलरी डेट सेल्स अरेंज टू लुक लाइक स्ट्रक्चर रिजेंबलिंग पेपिला सो दिस इज अ ब्रीफ ओवर व्यू अबाउट ऑल द स्पेशल सब टाइप्स ऑफ इन्वेसिव ब्रेस्ट कार्सिनोमास you only need this much information you don't need to go in detail in each one of these because it will become very long and hectic and is usually not asked in the exams now there is a special condition called inflammatory carcinoma of the breast what do we mean by inflammatory carcinoma of the breast you have to learn this topic sub topic in details because it is often asked in exams and in viva questions so inflammatory carcinoma of breast is not a specific histological sub type rather it is just a clinical representation what happens in inflammatory carcinoma of the breast as the word inflammatory implies there is swollen erythematous breast that appears inflamed now why does it appear inflamed what happens is that in some cancers that are going to be really bad the cancer cells invade dermal lymphatics and there is inflamed appearance what does it mean so you know that each tissue has a certain lymphatics now you can imagine that if a tumor is invading these lymphatics and is blocking these lymphatics then what will happen the, the drainage of lymph will be impaired and what will happen if the drainage of lymph is impaired the lymph will collect and you will see swollen erythematous breast that looks like inflamed but remember that in inflammatory carcinoma of the breast true inflammation is absent why it is called inflamed inflammatory because it appears inflamed but is actually not inflamed so remember that true inflammation is absent and underlying carcinoma is a poorly differentiated cancer so it has a very bad prognosis so the whole point of understanding is that inflammatory carcinoma of breast is not a specific histological sub type rather any dangerous breast cancer can become inflammatory carcinoma if the tumor behaves very aggressive and starts to invade dermal lymphatics then it can become an inflammatory carcinoma so remember it is the not so remember it is not an so remember it is not a histological sub type rather it is a clinical presentation of aggressive breast cancers and as the underlying carcinoma is poorly differentiated so it has very bad prognosis so this is all about the morphological and pathological features of invasive breast carcinomas in the next video we will discuss prognostic and predictive factors and staging and grading